for more uh, on U.S.-China trade tensions, let's get to our guest host, Eric Cantor, and Michael Zizas. He is a public policy strategist at Morgan Stanley. Uh, let me just start with, with, you, with you, Eric. In terms of the, uh, the backdrop, uh, in terms of the business at, at Molis, and with the, the overhang of of the trade wars, what, what, what are you seeing? You know, listen, I, I know there's just a lot of talk and market sentiment out there with the volatility that's being caused by, uh, you know, the trade talks collapse and then restart and start. But I tell you, that in, in our business, um, you know, we, we are we do see that there is maybe an elongation of time that it takes from deal announcement to closure on the larger cap uh, deals, but. You know, we play very heavy in the mid-cap market, um, sponsor-related activity. And right now, the things that have been in place uh, for M&A uh, in that arena are still in place. Right. I mean, I mean, you, you think about it. Uh, right now, you've got technology driving disruption. And you've got now boards thinking about, are their companies well-positioned? You've got a situation in the sponsor community where maybe before there were so many private equity and alternative managers, you know, you have family businesses that may have sold every 30 or 40 years. You now have got timetables at three to five years where these businesses are turning over. You add on to that the access and availability of capital. Um, and uh, we also see actually the, the issue of activism. You know, M&A has become a big component when it comes to activism. So, I, you know, listen, the year started out probably slower than we would have liked, um, but uh, really are seeing an uptick in activity now. And and hoping for a very strong. So you don't think the volatile half. market typically, if you look at a volatile market, it's bad for it's bad for M and A. Yeah, yeah. but but again, it, it just depends on on where you are. We're looking, but I think that such a key driver to this, and and the large cap's not as rate sensitive. I mean, we know that, but again, the, in the mid market, the strength is about the availability and access to capital. It's about this constant churn, if you will. Uh, you, mean and so, in you, mean, you mean the private equity, this, this, the game of hot potato that's being played in the private equity business right, right. now? Right. I mean, listen, you, you've got to think about it. Like I said before, this used, these used to be family businesses that right. were built up over decades. And now, you know, these are businesses that are, that are uh, bought and sold. They are made more efficient. They, they produce more to the bottom line. Uh, so right now we feel, uh, and our activity is uh, indicating there's still a lot of confidence around the mid-market. Uh, while you've got these macro trade issues that are distracting the public equity. All right, Michael, specifically with the China deal, your comments are that, you know, when time passes, maybe there's some opportunity for, for something to happen, but I'm not sure you see any real change since that blow up in, in late April at this point. Is, is there any yeah. reason for optimism that, that we're further along? Yeah, well, I think that's fair. So with the headline overnight, for example, I think that's relatively low quality information because what we've seen since May 5th, which is when the deal really broke down along some really meaningful key issues, is that there have been plenty of talks, but there's also been plenty of escalation. So it's impossible for us to know exactly what's being talked about, but the pattern of evidence is that both sides are talking, but both sides are escalating, which would suggest that the key issues of when the tariffs come off, how to enforce um, intellectual property protections, um, how much China's economy should open up and over what time frame, that there hasn't been any meaningful progress there. I think what we'd want to see in order to kind of take the type of headline that we got overnight and think that's a high quality piece of information that makes you more bullish is some type of credible report that there's progress made on those issues, or at least some other action that would tell you that that's happening behind the scenes. Who's going to want to make a deal more? Uh, I, th I think it really depends on how this plays out. So, for example, uh, in our view, we think the framework right now is that both sides kind of see the payoffs to escalating as much greater than cooperating, and that's why we think this is going to escalate to the point where all the announced tariffs that we have so far are going to go on. Until the, pay the payoffs change, if, for example, uh, the economy shows material weakness, financial markets Who's sell economy? Off. Well, but, I mean, it, it That's goes what I mean. Sides, so right? wh which one, in your view, which economy is going to take it on the chin? Well, they both are. They both are, right? Equally? I mean, China's, no, no. In the, in the, so there's sort of a short term and the long term. In the short term, because China, because the U.S. has a trade deficit with China, there's sort of more acute pain there first, and it's already been felt okay. um, in great deal. It sort of takes time to travel the U.S., and you know, I think what the conduit for that is corporate confidence lower, capex lower. Eventually, I know I'm good looking, but market. Michael's talking is uh, there. You are. 
Yeah. Oh boy, I think honestly <laughs> someone fell asleep in the in the control room. Maybe. But, uh, yeah. You know, you're talking about the payoff, though. I think that that calculus may change as we round the corner to the election. I mean, it really is. Um, that's where I think. You know, at some point now, we've got a much stronger economy than most because of our consumer. But at some point, are we robust enough to be able to handle the acceleration that you talk about? That's my question. Yeah. If, we, if we just kept and steady where we are, maybe we can handle this. The question is, are the consumers going to start to react negatively if that acceleration occurs? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a function of the labor market. So the, the, we've seen in the data that corporate confidence is starting to come down, CapEx is starting to come down. We've started to see growth in labor hours work start to come down. We haven't actually seen layoffs yet. I mean, that's the obvious trigger to how the consumer then would have behaved differently. Uh, our economist view, we're kind of really close to the precipice here. A couple more escalations, I think that puts us clearly into global growth recession territory and really starts flirting with U.S. recession territory for 2020. All right, thank you, Michael. Eric, uh, you'll be with us for the rest of the hour. I want to I see where you stand because, you know, you're a big time, you know, Wall Streeter now. <laughs> so now you've got a horse in the game for business, so you probably. You know, that, was, that was part of but my then, issue. I always had a horse in the game. But then you, when you were a Republican, <laughs> you were a classic Republican who hates tariffs uh, and, and loves free trade. So you got a lot of reasons to not like what's going on. I just, yeah. I just wonder if you think it's, it's something that needed to be done. or Are, are you patient with, with what President Trump is trying to do? Or, or do you think we need to get out of this? It was ill-conceived and we need to get out as soon as possible. What, what, just in a nutshell, what do you think? You know, I, I have, I've, I've said before, right in this table, that we, we should be taking on China, and he deserves credit for stepping that fight. I hear up. a butt coming. In, There's a, a comma, comma, uh, comma, uh, comma but, yeah, yeah. But I don't think um, all the other trade uh, spats that are attractive to someone and people at the White House. Canada, Mexico, Europe. Right. Let's get the USMCA done. I mean, I think, you know, speaking to Michael and, and the issue of acceleration on the trade right. front with China, if at least you go and put that USMCA to bed and say, hey. Well, it's not the administration holding that up right now. Right. But the administration could go in and say, you know, look, and I know White Houses from what I know, is doing a good job, and, and Pelosi apparently is dealing no. with him straight up on trying to get this done. It's really not possible to hear a butt coming, no. I don't think. They were very immature. You can see uh, one. You can see one coming. It depends. Uh, but it's impossible, <laughs> really, to hear one. Uh.